Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm Garen Howells, and welcome to my documentary, Exploring the World of Defence Mechanisms. Throughout this film, I intend to understand why people use defence mechanisms. Firstly on a basic level, then progressively developing a more complex understanding. And I'd like to take you on that journey with me. So we're better to start than to start. In psychological terms, a defence mechanism is described as a mental process initiated unconsciously to avoid experiencing shame, conflict, anxiety, loss of self-esteem, or any other unfavourable or unacceptable thoughts or feelings a person may have. They can often stem from learned behaviours that a person may have attributed throughout a troublesome childhood or experience. When we became overwhelmed with emotions or stress, we would employ such techniques to guard ourselves. A defence mechanism becomes pathological when using it causes a deterioration of an individual's physical or mental health. I interviewed a welfare officer at a local college to talk to me more about defence mechanisms. Here's Elaine Griffiths. Um, why do people use defence mechanisms? I don't think most people are aware that they use the defence mechanism. It's something that we do automatically to defend ourselves. Uh, when I say ourselves, our, our ego, our, our, our yeah. inside ourselves. I don't think many people know they, that they're doing it. Um, most people have to be trained, I think, or know a lot about, or not a lot, know something about psychology to know what defence mechanisms are. I carried out research during pre-production to ascertain if many young people, particularly students, knew what the term psychological defence mechanisms meant. 24% of those I interviewed did not know, and a further 24% admitted they were generally unsure what the term meant. Of the remaining 52% of interviewees, 28% said they would be interested in expanding their knowledge on the subject. When asked if any of the interviewees could identify any defence mechanisms, only 36% could submit any answers. Lastly, I asked my interviewees if they had noticed themselves, or if any of their peers had noticed themselves, using any defence mechanisms. Only 16% admitted to this, all of which had noted they received none or an inadequate amount of emotional support during the process. A further 75% admitted that they would have wanted this had it been available. My research showed that there's a large portion of young people who are unsure or do not know what defence mechanisms are. Why do you think this is? It could be they just haven't learned, they haven't been taught, or they don't really understand the need. Um, it's probably until they become older in life and they, they, they feel the anxiety of things aren't going right, or, and they, they tend to find out why, or research maybe why, why things affect them in certain ways. Furthermore, my research showed that a little over a third of everyone interviewed could identify a defence mechanism. Why do you think that is? I think a lot of adults can t tend to recognise why they're doing something and recognise that that is actually a defence mechanism. Um, Humour, for example, can be yeah. um, used as a defence mechanism. Yeah? If you laugh something off, you don't really want to show how it's affecting you. The research I had gathered had led me to conclude that the young adult generation could value an informative, yet entertaining, display of information. Do you feel it's important for uh, people, especially young people, to learn about defence mechanisms? And if so, why? Well, yeah, because uh, you know, young people use defence mechanisms, lots of different defence mechanisms to protect themselves, especially when they, I don't think they've formed their true self as adolescents and young people. Um, I don't think you, you develop that until later on in, in life, certainly post-20. Um, so I think it's really important that they start to understand why they're doing specific things. For example, um, talking about something that maybe quite makes them feel uncomfortable, instead of saying, well, this makes me feel quite uncomfortable, they start giggling or laughing. That's g going back to when they were a child, how to deal with things. So instead of saying, yeah, that really makes me feel uncomfortable, they would laugh or giggle or do other behaviours, protect themselves. 
There are a great number of defense mechanisms that individuals employ to help guard themselves from emotional distress. Some of the most common are humor, regression, disassociation, denial, projection, and rationalization. The latter of which was the subject of a notable monologue by Jeff Goldblum in Lawrence Kasdan's acclaimed 1983 movie, The Big Chill. You know, I'm not even claiming that people always think they're doing the right thing. They may know that they're doing something uh, dishonest or insensitive or manipulative, but they almost always think there's a good reason for doing it. See, they, they almost always think that it'll turn out for the best in the end. And even if it's just that it turns out best for them, because by definition, what's best for them is what's best. Mm -hmm. Now look, in addition, you instantly come up against a question of style. My style may be too uh, uh, direct. Perhaps given my style, I seem more nakedly opportunistic or jerky or... Uh... What was the other thing? Whatever. But really all that's happening is that I'm trying to get what I want, which is what everybody does. It's just that some of their styles are so warm or charming or sincere or otherwise phony, you don't realize they're just trying to get what they want. So you see, my transparent efforts are in a way much more honest and admirable. Why is it what you just said strikes me as a massive rationalization? Don't knock rationalization. Where would we be without it? I don't know anyone who'd get through the day without two or three juicy rationalizations. They're more important than sex. Ah, oh, come on. Nothing's more important than sex. Oh, yeah? Have you ever gone a week without a rationalization? Some defense mechanisms are more prevalent in particular genders and age groups than others. These often stem from particular attributes gained throughout life experiences. These can often develop, worsen, or evolve if improperly treated. How strongly linked are defense mechanisms to anxiety? I believe they're very strongly linked to anxiety because if you don't deal with the presenting issue or the past issue, if you put these denial uh, mechanisms in place or these um, coping techniques in place, you're actually denying the real issues. So you know, they're very important to recognise because if you don't um, attend to the issues, then they're going to cause anxiety within the person. The term defence mechanism was first coined by renowned neurologist Sigmund Freud after he had observed some regressive traits in his daughter. Anna. Anna, who later in life also studied psychology and neurology, later expanded on her father's ideas and established a greater number of defense mechanisms that are widely recognized today. How do you feel using defense mechanisms makes an individual feel? If they know they're doing it, then they're not being true to themselves. So that's, that's quite disturbing really, isn't it? But it may be part of their personality that they don't feel comfortable in being themselves. Um, but again, if you can't be yourself, then it stops you from living who you are and, and being who you are. So that can be quite, quite bad, really, for your personality, can't it? And cause all different types of psychological problems for the future. How damaging do you think a defence mechanism can be to someone's mental state? It would depend on what that person would be protecting themselves from. Obviously we've got our inner self, that we should be true to our inner self, but we put defence mechanisms in place to protect ourselves. They then can cause that anxiety, because you're not being true to your real self, so then the anxiety can then raise, uh, rise. Sorry. Um, so it can be quite damaging, especially if you build that up through your life. And a lot of anxiety can then build up. Whereas if you take responsibility for what's happening and then try to change that, then you won't create all that anxiety. If someone you knew personally was uh, using a defence mechanism to deal with some sort of pain or to avoid conflict, would you um, find it appropriate to confront them and try to help them? It totally depends on the situation. If it was a close friend, then yes, I would say, you know, that's denial or that's defence or, you know, you're behaving like this because you're not accepting the full truth. It depends totally on the situation and the person. I think we can conclude from the footage that we've seen that defence mechanisms can be very vast and different. and can each affect people in many different ways. And though people may not seem like they're using them at first, when you dig down, you may find something there. But are there any tried and tested ways to help someone cope with using defence mechanisms? Um, there are lots of ways 
obviously it depends on the situation and what they are guarding themselves against if it's really a, a really deep guarded thing that they're protecting themselves against it, it can be quite dangerous to open that up um, so it totally depends on the relationship you've got with them um, and the type of issues that you're dealing with but there, there are professional people that can deal in different ways with different people but as, like I said it depends on the relationship I feel whether you can get them to recognise their defences or not. I feel that today I have helped you learn a little bit more about defence mechanisms but there is so much more that cannot be covered in this short programme and as psychologically people change, surely more will arise. However, I do feel that an important thing to take away from this is to help those who may be in need around you, or even yourself. I've been Garen Howells, and thank you.